Welcome to the Information Technology Foundational Program. Today, in the next few minutes, you will learn the basic foundation of information technology. So if you are here today and you have no knowledge of IT, relax and let's roll together. This will be a fun session and you will learn one or two things to give you that foundation you've always wanted. Let's get started. What is information technology? In general terms, all of us have heard the word thrown around information technology, but let's keep it simple. This is the use of computers, softwares, and other digital devices to store, process, and communicate information in general. So all of us on this call today, if you process information in your bank, if you send messages to your loved ones, we are part of the ecosystem of information security. Now, there are some components we can agree. We have the hardware, the software, the networking, the database, and security in general. We can agree hardware is just a physical device. Softwares are those engines running some of the things we use, like your WhatsApp, your Zoom, and your team. Those are your software. Networking is connectivity of devices. So when I come to your home and you have a router connecting all your phones, your TVs, your TVs, to the network, those are the network. Database is a storage um, repository where we keep data in general terms. Cybersecurity, we're trying to make sure that no malicious actor comes into our network from external sources or internal sources at times. So history of computing in general, this is as far back as so many things in 1642, Blazer Pascal invented this Pascaline. It's the first manual calculator. 1822, some programming logic was developed. 1936, Turing machines. 46, general purpose electronic devices. As far back as 71 also, we have microprocessor build. 81, we have the micro IBM mainframe, and it's just been crazy ever since. 2007, Apple launched some products. So it's been evolving over time. Now, all of us will agree, then we got into the cloud space. Everybody's talking about cloud now. Then now the big daddy out there today in the world is all about AI, right? Artificial intelligence, chat GTP, Copilot, and so many of the other ones like um, Gemini out there by Google. So there's so much out there right now. So, but at least we have an idea of what it's all about. Then categories of IT in general, like we said, there's the hardware which talks about the physical components of IT, like your server, your networking devices. Then software is really the programming, the application that runs the operating system in general. We have the data, which is an information, which is mostly the storage management and communication of those data and information in general. Services that we have out there, most of us are aware of, services like the cloud services, security, and support in general. So information technology typically just encompass all the components that is required to store, process, and communicate our informational information in a digital format. So that's pretty much what it is in general terms. So what is the hardware? I think we can all agree. The basic one we've all seen is we have the motherboard, hard drive. Those are common out there. Then, of course, we have the processors that help us to process information in the memory space. And we also have the CPU, Central Processing Unit, uh, that helps us to make sure that the processing is optimized and um, helps us to improve performance of the computers in general. And software, we can agree, these are set of instructions or programs used to operate and execute specific tasks in our system. For example, we have a software to communicate through email. We can send emails through Gmail, right? Those are applications out there that is designed to do certain tasks. If you are processing your payroll, those are applications like your Quick, um, QuickBook or um, ADP, those are designed to process payroll in general. So those are some good ones out there. And um, in general, again, data are raw. All of us must have heard of the normal saying that data is the new oil, right? So data is raw out there. So that's a big one. So the way we process data, the way we store it, the way we communicate with data is equally very, very important right now. All right, what about infrastructure in general? 
So this is really the foundation of our organization leverage technology to achieve their goals in general. So we're talking of the hardware component, the software component, and the network, which is the connectivity of multiple devices within your environment in general. Um, what about the data center? A lot of us must have heard of data center. This is typically a dedicated space that house all of these huge computer systems. So look at it like a major warehouse that has all of our computer information in it. So in other words, if somebody asks you, okay, what is the data center? We can easily say it's just a dedicated space that house all of those key components in terms of your computer infrastructure. What is cloud? All of us can agree. It allows us to share multiple resources. People use the cloud because it's cheaper for them most of the time. This can scale to expand their capacity at any point in time. And it allows you to really enhance the best of technology and allow you to focus on your task, your job at all times. Types of computing options out there. We have public, private, and hybrid computer. Mostly when we say public, it means you're going to share it with a lot of other vendors out there. Private is dedicated to you. Hybrid is a mixture of both. We can all agree if it's public, it means likely to be cheaper. Private is dedicated to you, so mostly will be more expensive in general. So those are some things we should just uh, prepare our mind for. Popular vendors out there, we have AWS, Google, Cloud, Microsoft, Azure. They are like the three big ones out there. There's Oracle also, but those are the big ones out there in general. IT infrastructure, like we stated before, this is just the main components of key areas that make up your infrastructure would be like your server, your storage, your networking devices, your computers, your operating system, your databases, your application. All of those combined is what forms your infrastructure. So in your home today, your home network, there's an infrastructure in it. There are cables installed to pull the router to your home. There are components that connect to your computers, so you have to set it up in the system. So all of those infrastructure are in our home today. We may not see it, but the service provider have pulled the cable to your home and you just plugged it in, but the infrastructure is already there, all right, even at the home front for us. Another one is um, what is an IT network? Let's keep it simple. Network is really communication between multiple devices and users in general. So we could have the connection with multiple devices. The popular network types out there, we have what we call LAN, local area network. We have one wide area network also. And there are so many of the other ones out there. You know, the main thing is just connectivity of multiple devices. So in your home today, your home is already network because Many devices are connected to your network. So your printer, your fridge, your ring, every one of those devices is connected to a network. All right, OSI layer, let's keep it simple. I'll keep this simple now. Interview prep in your mind, they will ask you, what are the key, how many uh, layer do we have in OSI? Seven layers. The first one is application layer. This allow access to end user application that we use day to day, right? A common one is HTTP that we put on our website before we go in. Presentation is saying how we translate and encrypt data for this application, right? Session layers is saying how do we establish and manage sessions in our layers? Think about your web browser. Each one of those elements is present even as we use those browsers. Transport layer talks about end-to-end -end communication on how information flow. Network layer determines the paths and logical address to use. So mostly your network layer will be like your router. Data link layer will get into how we perform checking and handling of your MAC address, which is just the physical address of your devices. And the physical layer are the cabling we are talking about, the electrical and optical connection or physical connection that brings those information to your home front. So from the ISP, that is the physical layer. So that's just the hierarchy and way of flow on how those information moves within your environment in general. All right, this is a good quote. Information technology has become the nervous system that controls the flow 
of information that sustains and gives meaning to all organizations. So, some programming language, in case somebody asks you, JavaScript, Java, C, Python, these are some popular programming language. The beautiful thing is that you don't need to be a programmer. Now, with all these AI tools, you'll be surprised a lot of them are just spitting out programming for us too, which is pretty, pretty awesome. What is AI? AI stands for artificial intelligence. And it's just an exciting field that is rapidly evolving right now. And it's just crazy the way it's going because every industry is using it right now. We are talking about healthcare, education, defense. Every part of our life now is moving towards this space. So it's good to just be conversant of it too. A quick history of AI, you could see 50s, there was neural network developed. 97, IBM got in and defeats um, a chess champion, Gary Kasparov. Now, 2012, there's a lot of evolution. 2024 has just made it um, exploded. 2022 was just amazingly different. November 2022 changed everything with the advent of GPT. So that is a big one out there today. Uh, like we said, AI has some elements. There's artificial general intelligence. This is a task that system that helps us to handle multiple tasks specifically within our space. Um, a and I focus on specific narrow tasks. AGI gets into, you know, um, more varieties of tasks. ASI is even crazy because now we're talking about equivalent of intelligence than humans, you know. Then LLM will be large learning model, language model that a lot of people have all this huge data that generates human-like text. It's just insane. And every organization right now is moving towards this angle. IoT in simple space, we're just talking of Internet of Things. It's comprised of devices connected across platforms. So we are talking about your wearable devices, your ring, every one of those devices that typically we don't really um, think as your normal day-to-day -day computer stuff is connected now to the network. So with the likes of like 5G right now, is even getting it much more robust you know, with the cloud platform. So, so many things are now connected together and we call them Internet of Things. Operational technology, and sometimes we hear the word industrial control system. So you might have heard of the word SCADA and ICS. SCADA is supervisory control and data acquisition system. And think about it like your refineries or manufacturing plants, whatever they do, all the robotics, all the equipment they use, things together, those are critical in terms of industrial control system as a whole. So that's something we should just um, be very mindful of also in general. Um, IT careers, some general IT careers we can see. There's cybersecurity role, software development, network architect. Um, you know, most people get into technical part of cyber, non-technical side of cyber. Whatever role it is, this is just some example of some IT roles out there. Now, let's talk about a little bit of cybersecurity. We'll talk about some best practices, you know, and a brief overview of it, some of the common threats in cybersecurity. We'll talk about that too. So cybersecurity's major key areas, we have confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So confidentiality is keeping information private, as simple as that, right? Integrity is keeping information accurate, and availability is saying, is the information or data accessible, available when we need it in a timely manner? That's very important. So let me repeat again. We have the CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and also availability. Confidentiality means preventing sensitive information from reaching the wrong people. Integrity means maintaining and assuring the accuracy of our data. And ultimately, availability means information should be accessible and usable upon the demand by only authorized entities at any point in time. Um, some general terms in cybersecurity involves techniques to protect our computers, network program, data from unauthorized access, hacking, and damage in general. And mostly it focuses around protecting our devices, our network, our program, and data and things like firewalls to make sure it prevents it from malicious actors also. Some common terms you would have heard, risk, vulnerability, threat, breach. Let's talk about it. Risk relates to future uncertainty and possible harm. Threats are potential 
vector of attack on your asset. Then vulnerability, it's really opportunity for threats to harm access or refer to weaknesses that can be exploited. Breach refers to a security event that compromises a data. So most of us must have heard of breaches, maybe the likes of T-Mobile, Target Store, uh, Facebook data breach. So if a security event compromises our data, that will be considered a security um, breach in general. Why need a cyber risk assessment? We need it because it allows organizations to protect their most valuable assets by proactively identifying and addressing those cybersecurity risks in general. So it's a big deal for us, really. Why do we need to do data security also? Data security is equally critical to protect the confidentiality of information from unauthorized access and to prevent data loss. So that's a big deal for us in general. Why do we need data privacy also? This is the critical priority that builds customers' trust and ensures legal compliance. Some of us must have heard of GDPR for the European Union, CCPA for California, and every other state has their own state laws around privacy. So if you violate or breach privacy for healthcare, for financial, for insurance, any field, it has serious consequences for us. Okay. What about data governance? This provides the framework to manage data in a strategic way and treat it as asset and have defined data ownership, data stewards, policies, and controls around those data in general. So some general terms around what is policy, procedure, and guideline. Policy are typically high-level overall plan that outlines your goals and acceptable procedure, for example. Procedures get into a specific set of steps accomplished to help you accomplish a task. Then guidelines are just general rules or principles that provide some good direction for us, like best practices in general. Okay. And what is the future of IT in general? Um, it's going to keep evolving. Areas like AI, augmented reality, quantum computing will keep emerging. And who knows what the next one will be? And we can only hope. It's going to be a bright future. Thank you for listening and welcome on board. This will be fun. Thank you, everybody. And we'll talk soon in the next program. Talk soon, everybody. Thank you for participating.